to Beginning Figure Drawing Part 2. So in this session, we are going to look at the proportions of the figure and give you another exercise to help you on your journey to drawing the figure better. So, let's get started. Alright, so let's talk about proportion before we go into our next exercise because I think uh, discussion of proportion is going to help you with this exercise. So really what we're going to do is equate the body by, you know, the head. So however tall your head is, you know, how, how many heads tall is the body? So I'm going to share with you what that looks like. And then what I want you to do is you kind of draw along with me, all right? If I draw on your, and this be like in your notes, okay? If I draw a circle, a, an oval here, here's my notes. I want to know how tall you think that figure is based on that oval being the head size. And I'm going to take and rip a little piece of paper, like so, for my measuring tool, because I like to do that. <laughs> All right. If you've guessed eight heads high, seven and a half heads high, seven, you're, you're in the ballpark. In fact, you know, back when it was um, the thing to be really tall and slender for a model, when they would do fashion drawing, they would draw their figures to be anywhere from 9 to 10 heads tall to accentuate that slender tallness. But, generally speaking, we say eight heads tall because eight is a round number and it's just easier to deal with than seven and a half. So what I've done is I've made a mark on my little piece of paper. I'm going to put that down. And I'm now going to come through, and if I were to kind of just measure this out, and we can just measure it out this way. We'll just measure it over here. So I'm going to come through and make eight sections. I think it would be great if you would draw this with me because I think you would have a better understanding then. So one, two, three. So I'm going to number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one more makes eight. Okay? That means right here, we know that's where the feet are going to go. Oh, well, if the feet are going to go there, where does everything else go? Well, as we looked before, you know, um, the, so the knee, actually, I guess the hip, the hip area is right, right in the center, basically. So that's, that's your hip area, all right? And that puts the waist about three, maybe, somewhere in between three and four. Depends on whether they're long-waisted or short-waisted. Okay. If I draw a neck, I'm just going to draw the neck right here. The shoulders are going to slope down gently. They're not going to slope down a lot. So, how many heads wide do you think the shoulders are? Or, yeah, how many heads wide? So, if I were to measure this right here, and then let's say we even measure this picture, is that I have drawn this head to be the size of her head, right? So let's just take a look and see what that looks like. So if I come down here, okay, and I'm going to make a mark on here just because, and I pull this over, there's one shoulder, there's one shoulder. So the shoulder, unless of course we've been working out big time, 
I come here right in the center and kind of make a little mark. That means the shoulders are going to be somewhere probably about right here. So I can kind of drop that down about right there, right? Okay. Now, let's see if you can see this. One. So I'm standing, and hopefully I'm aware <laughs> the camera is catching me. But as I stand, notice where my fingertips are dropping. They are dropping mid-thigh. There's my hip. Here's my knee, right? So right here, that's where my fingertips drop. If I'm going to draw this figure right in here. And that means that, you know, this distance here, I measure here to here, they're about the same. I'm going to say that my knees are right two heads high right in here. I already said the hips are here, right? And then I'm just going to use a triangle for the foot sideways. So the foot would look something like that. If I'm going to draw the foot straight on, I'm going to do a little half circle. So there we go. Now, a lot of times what happens is that foot is more pointed towards you, and so it might actually look like this, right? But, so that we keep in with our heads things, we're going to do like this. All right, so I'm going to gently pull this in toward the waist a little bit. All right. We said that the hands fall right here, so that is at the 5 mark, all right? So there's where my hands are going to be. Okay. And that means that divide that in half, that's about where your elbow is, which is right here at this line here. Ta -da! There it is. Okay. Well, let's say we want to extend our hand out. It's going to be kind of like a pivot. From here to here, there's a pivot. And so if I were to take and pivot, so coming out like this, that's going to just gently come up like so. And I could have my hand something like this. Like so. All right. That shows you the proportion of the figure. So knowing this, you can sit there and if you are drawing, let's say one of the figures that's kind of standing up like so, then you can mark your, your eight pieces off to the side before you draw so that you know that you're getting that, that proportion for the figure. Normally what happens with a beginning artist is they overcompensate. They either make the body really, really big and the legs really, really short and the hands really, really short. And then when you're finished drawing, you go, oh, something's wrong. But I don't know what. Yeah, right? So make yourself a little grid line before you draw these these standing figures. And we're going to go into our next exercise. And for this one, I'm going to use a crayon. Just because. This exercise, I want you to think about the bones inside the body. In other words, strip all the skin off and all the muscle and, whatever, and just visualize the skeleton inside, right? <laughs> So now I have my daughter, Casey, and I am going to try and demonstrate what that might look like if we were to do the skeletal um, bone exercise, such as it is. So we'll start with the head, kind of an oval here because she's kind of turned a little bit. The shoulder is here and here. 
as you can see, but she's hunched. So if I was going to draw that, I would want to draw that with a curved line, like so. The base of the spine right in here, and it gently curves a little bit and goes right in there, right? The hips. Well, we can clearly see that this hip joint's right here, but that other is probably somewhere about right here. So yes, lines will crisscross over as we are doing things. Again, I'm going to make that a curved line. Then I've got her arm. You'll also notice that this arm appears to be shorter than the other arm, and the reason for that is that foreshortening that we talked about. Here's her knee. That's going to go up to that joint. This will go here. There's a knee there, right? And voila. And voila. So... If I was to look at this without her image, it might look something like this. And that's fine. You can feel the movement. You can feel the bend. Um, and from this, you can draw the gesture line over it really easy. So let's look at what that might look like.
how does this help you? If you were to extend this project now and do your gesture drawing on top of that, it might help you figure out the proportions better. So here's, and also that movement, because she's got a lot of movement right here in that back area. Okay, in that shirt, right? And then here's the blouse that's coming out. And there's her bear. 